Hey, I am Divya from Group 25. Today, I will be talking about first aid for respiratory arrest. Let's start with what is respiratory arrest. Respiratory arrest is a life-threatening condition uh, when a patient stops breathing, which requires immediate uh, management. So with respiratory arrest, the patients are unconscious and also are about to become unconscious. There are two different states. So uh, when a patient goes into respiratory arrest, they're not getting enough oxygen. So to their vital organs, or they may suffer brain damage, cardiac arrest within minutes if we didn't treat them properly. So the first thing always you would need to do is assess their responsiveness, always um, check for pulse, and you can begin with manual ventilation. I will get into the details. And if you are in the hospital, if code blue isn't, um, hasn't been initiated, make sure code blue is initiated. So I will get into the details more um, later on. So let's start with what are the causes of respiratory arrest? So respiratory arrest or impaired respiration can progress into respiratory arrest caused usually by airway obstruction. For example, if you eat too fast or you eat while talking, that is when your epiglottis may get choked in that area. In this airway passage, there may be obstruction. And there, this may lead to respiratory arrest. This is why they say do not talk while eating and eat slowly, eat properly so that they're to prevent any choking and respiratory arrest. Next, there may be respiratory muscle weakness. So this is like a condition um, that is usually like a um, inward condition, like they have a muscle weakness. And also there may be decreased in respiratory effort. So these are the causes. Next, I'm going to talk about is airway obstruction. There are different types of airway obstruction that not many people know. So I would like to talk about that. First, um, airway obstructions, it involves two different types. There are upper airway obstruction and there are lower airway obstructions. So many people don't know this type of um, airway obstruction that there are two different types. So let's start with upper airway obstruction. So upper airway obstruction mainly occur in infants um, that are less than three months old. So who are usually nose breathers, they, have, they, they breathe using their nose. So they have um, upper airway obstruction, like secondary nasal blockage or something like that. So um, at all ages, um, muscular tones decrease. Um, consciousness may cause upper airway obstruction. So um, this, uh, this is like an exception, like for people with other ages. So yeah, the, due to loss of muscular tone, then yeah, that, that may cause upper airway obstruction. So next, I'm going to talk about is lower airway obstruction. So this may result in diseases, like it uh, may result from aspiration, bronchial, uh, bronchospasm, airspace filling disorder, like pneumonia, like pulmonary edema, pulmonary hemorrhage, and also drowning. So these are types of lower airway obstruction. So um, what are the symptoms, what are the signs? You can see a person is tiny, uh, turning bluish. Cyanosis is one of the biggest signs. Um, that is like a uh, more serious sign. So of course, look, uh, look at the patient's uh, respiratory rate and respiratory, how, does, how do they breathe and all that. Is it dyspnea? Are they like having a choking? Are they having a hard time trying to, you know, clear their airway? So a person with hypoxemia may be cyanotic. Okay, so a person with hypoxemia may be cyanotic, but a person, person being treated with um, high flow oxygen, so they may not be hyposemic and also they may not exhibit cyanosis. So we may really need to look at patients who are having high flow oxygen to make sure they are not having any um, respiratory arrest because for them, the signs and symptoms are very subtle. So always look at their respiratory rate and how they are respirating. How to decide what a patient needs? So when a casualty, someone who has stopped breathing but they still have pulse, they still have pulse, then they will need ear, which is expired air resuscitation. However, a casualty who has both stopped breathing and also who has no pulse need both ear and CPR. So they need expired air resuscitation and also they need cardiopulmonary resuscitation. If not possible to be breathing, if there is no pulse, then there is time critical four minutes or more without oxygen can lead to brain damage. Hence, instant action, instant first aid is vital in this situation. 
So let's start with the practical part where I will show you guys how to perform ear, expired air res resuscitation, and also CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Let's start with the ear technique. Turn the patient onto their back and open the airway by placing one hand on the forehead, one hand on the forehead, tilt their head back, and then support their joint with your finger in a pistol grip position. You guys can see my hand is like in a pistol grip position. If there is any denture in the patient, it is only required to be removed if it is broken or loose. Make a tight seal around the patient's mouth with your mouth. And then close the patient's nostril with your cheek. So each breath should last about um, 1 to 2 seconds with a pause between to let the air flow back out. Um, watch the chest rise as you breathe in and ensure the breaths are actually going into the lungs and watch the chest falls. Give 5 quick breaths in 10 seconds and then check for carotid pulse after giving 5 full breaths. If, if they have no pulse, continue with this procedure again. Older children or adults need one breath every four seconds which means 15 breaths per minute babies need one breath every three seconds which means 20 breaths per minute recheck pulse is a cpr technique lie the patient completely flat and position yourself midway between the chest and head in order to move easily between compression and breaths let's start with hand position Find the midpoint of the sternum or the breastbone. For adults, place the heel of your compressing hand on the breastbone just below the midpoint and grasp your wrist with the other hand. Place the other hand on top of the first. For children, use only one hand and for babies, use tip of two fingers. Let's start with the compression technique. For adults, keep your shoulder directly over your hand and keep your arm straight. Lean the weight of your upper body on your hand to compress the chest. Keep a steady, even rhythm and do not jab with your hands or punch the breastbone. For adults, compress about 4 to 5 cm. For children, compress about 2 to 3 cm. For babies, compress about 1 to 2 cm. As you can see here, for adult, compress about 4 to 5 cm. That should be the length. For baby, it should only be 1 to 2. And for children, for small children, it should be 2 to 3. Each compression would last about less than one second and after each compression release pressure on chest without losing contact with it and allow chest to return to its normal position for an adult give 30 compression followed by two breaths over 15 seconds and for children give 30 compression and two breaths over 10 seconds 